change for my life, and for changes for the better, but as far as me getting into journaling um, to begin with, I've always been kind of um, thoughtful and contemplative of the things that happen in my life and why the things happen the way they do and um, what is life about. I, I've never been one to want to live a normal life or, or anything like that. So I was always questioning God on those aspects. Okay. Okay, so how long have you been journaling? Um, I started journaling when I was in middle school. And um, I would just keep little, cute little silly journals and um, the things that 12 and 13-year-olds talk about. And um, as I got older, the things started to get more uh, real, so to speak, and, and life changes started to happen. And I, you know, I went to God with more questions and more feelings, and, and then it kind of grew from there. So I have lots of different journals that I keep um, based on the different things that I need to take to God. So. Okay, okay. So with that, um, so why do you have different journals? <laughs> um, my brain is very... Um, organized. I like to try to stay organized. So mm-hmm. I noticed at one point that I was just writing everything in, in yeah. one big notebook. And yeah. Um, yeah. then later I decided to categorize. So now I have a notebook where I write down things where I'm thankful to God. Or I have a notebook where I write down the desires of my heart because he promises to give you those. So I want to make sure I communicate those to him. Um, yeah. I have a travel journal. I have a, a journal where I just have conversations with the Lord. And then I have a journal where I, I write down the revelations that I have from God. When I do hear him whisper and when I do see things connect in my world, I, I like to write those down so I can remember and reflect. Oh, okay. Okay. So so we there 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 is currently no specific way to uh journalize and everyone has a different type of way. And as Absolutely. we know, if we look at the screen here that I'm sharing, um I guess this was done like a couple of weeks ago when I when I referenced journaling and as it says here, this was on October 22nd, 2012, and I just had my own method of journaling, which was I wanted to have a special type of scripture focus for that day. So this is October 22nd, 2012. And, you know, the date is important because it, it's, it allows you to reflect on what happened before. And we have worship, evangelism, stewardship, serving, study insights. So I categorized certain things about Um, having a certain type of discipline for myself and referencing what I did in order to fit that need, in order to meet that need. But for you, for instance, you're referencing that you just had different journals for things in general, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. So for me, I mean, I was mainly a lot more simple. I mean, I'm not – I wasn't going into uh, a lot of writing here, but I definitely wrote something in order to have a certain type of reflection. Right. Okay. So let's look at yours, some of the journal entries that you sent me. Okay. Right. So what we have here uh, sometime around 2001. So right now it's 2014. So that was about 13 years ago. All right. right. So um, so what, what were you referencing in this one over here? I was 22. Um, I was just graduating from college, and I was at that point where I was like, now what? You know, I, I have my – degree God like like I'm supposed to have, quote, unquote, based on my family and my upbringing, and um, I have it. Now what do I do? And I was um, praying for, mm-hmm. for a job and, and those kind of things, and um, I, I wanted to be independent, to take care of myself, you know, and, and, and that kind of thing. And I felt like um, I couldn't, at this particular moment, I couldn't do anything. Um, yes. And so I had to lean on God in order to provide. And so that, that's, what, that's what this one is coming from. Okay. And I like some of your references when you start writing. In the forefront of your, your writing, it says, thank you, Lord. Right? So yeah. we're, giving, we're giving God a reverence. We're, we're attaching it to the First Amendment. You should have no other God before me. And putting a thank you, Lord, before anything kind of says, hey, you know what? I'm just glad that I'm here. I'm just glad that you love me. Right. right? Right. So and I and this mm-hmm. yeah. And this particular one I was thanking him because um I think the previous entry that I had written in my journal I was just kind of just venting to him. But then I, I state here that I feel better now than I did last night. So I woke up um feeling better and I was thanking him for making me feel better. Okay. 
Okay. And you're, you're talking here about some of your frustrations, and I think that's great because um, in, that thir- in that third sentence, just talking about your frustrations, to be able to reference it back and say, wow, you know what, I was frustrating, frustrated over things that possibly didn't really matter. And look how God, uh, how, look, how God um, look how great God is. And that right. he maybe, um, and this reflection allows us to, to say to ourselves, look where we were before and look where we are now. Right. Amen. Exactly. Right. So um, do you ever look at any other type of uh, journal entries over, um, like, say, even years ago? Yeah, I do go back, not often, because uh, I'll be honest, it takes a lot of me to go back out and read um, my previous entries based on the state of mind I was in and, and those kind of things. But I do go back and, and reference them just to see how I've grown, to see uh-huh. how God has come through for me. Um, and it puts things into perspective because some, like you were just saying, some problems are problems in the moment, but they're not problems in the long run. And it just yeah. helps you put stuff in, into perspective and to realize that whether it is big to you or small to you, God still has it under his thumb. So um, that it all gets handled, you know? Yeah. And then well, within this, you even put, uh, you said it's in the Bible, the passage about the birds. So I, I think they're referencing Matthew 25. And then yeah. saying that, um, you know, he even takes care of the birds, so of course he will take care of you, right? So you're referencing some scripture, which is part of the meditation process, and now you're speaking about praying, and you're, you're ending it with a thank you, Lord, and of course that you obviously love him. Let's look at the next one here, right? So, hey, you, right? So you, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like you, you, and, you and the Lord have a special type of friendship, right? Yeah. Well, once once you're able to connect the Lord in that type of way, you know that you can come to Him about, him about anything, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. well, what was going on with this entry? Um, this was a few months later, and um, I actually got that job that I was praying for. I was kind of just praying for yeah. direction in the in the first entry, and then this one was actually um, an answer prayer, and it was out of the blue, and it was totally um, unexpected, and I was totally doing something else, and honestly, the principal called me into her office and asked me if I wanted a job, and it's just, it just totally turned everything around, and that was the beginning of my 10-year teaching career and in this yeah. moment right here, you know. Okay. Um, it was amazing. Wow. Wow. Okay. And even with this, you said, please bless the principal for asking me to take the position. I like that because that shows that you understand exactly what corporate prayer is. And with corporate prayer, we're supposed to be able to pray together and be able to bless each other and be able to um, help each other out in any way possible. So this principle, although they're, they may be Christian or not Christian, we're still acknowledging that because of them, you're able to do God's work effectively, right? Yeah. They're, they're opening that door, right? So we should be saying thanks for multiple things, not just because God is so great, but because he's put people into our lives that are able to help you enhance the overall purpose. Right, right. Okay. So we have here, what about this one? Tell us about this one in 2003. Ah, yeah. This was when I really, I was always, I've always acknowledged the Lord. But these moments and in, in these posts and these entries, um, this is when I was delving deeper, and I, I think I had just recently gotten baptized. Um, I know I was 23 when that happened, and mm-hmm. I was struggling with my life before, yes. which wasn't, you know, like I said, I, I put good girl in quotes. I was that typical good girl. You could always count on me to do the right thing or the good thing or, or, or that kind of, I lived that kind of life. And then mm-hmm. um, I felt like all of a sudden after I got saved, after I got baptized and things went downhill and I, and I started to feel guilt, um, extreme, extreme, extreme guilt. And I was questioning, you know, now what? You know, I felt like I was better, a better person before I got saved. But now that I have you in my life and I'm acknowledging you, um, it seems like I, I'm, I'm doing worse now, like what, what is happening, you know? And so then that's like the questions that I was asking, like, well, what, I was basically just asking, you know, do you still like me? Do you still want me? Do you still, you know, those kind of questions. Wow. So, so when, when you look back at this, what is, what is your basic thought process? 
Well, I can definitely see my my um, personality. I can see my tendencies in here to be kind of hard on myself. Um, but I can see that I was learning. I I didn't. I knew the the picture of God, but I didn't have a relationship um, to where I was. I was still fearful of Him. I grew up very yeah. fearful of the Lord, and this is kind of um, me confronting that, you know, and taking my questions directly to Him. Right, and it seems like um, in one of the sentences you say that, like, I'm going to be rejected by you one day, and and I assume that you're asking him questions, and these are kind of like rhetorical questions. When we think about Jesus and the way that he spoke to everyone else, he kind of asked questions that possibly he knew the answer to, that he just wanted to, he wanted people to think, mm-hmm. right? And it seems like you're, you're kind of going in the same type of way. It's kind of rhetorical. Do you really understand when we sin? I think you kind of knew that, you understood that when we sin. So it's kind <laughs> of like, uh, meditating on that word and saying, you know what, because I understand that he understands what we sin, I shouldn't really feel as bad as I feel right now. Right. right? And, and you're acknowledging right. that you're having trouble understanding the immediate consequences of your sin and right. what actually happens to us. Mm-hmm. Right. But, and with that, with reflecting on this throughout your journal, you can constantly probably say to us, to yourself, like the last few sentences, and it says, and what happens if, when we commit the same sin repeatedly, mm-hmm. right, what happens to us? And with this, with putting this in the journal, you're able to reflect back, and maybe you found the answer by going through some Bible studies. Right. Right? Yeah, maybe you were very young in your knowledge at that point, but now you have a deeper understanding because now you've been meditating and you, you now understand his word um, a little bit better. And with that being said, I want to actually... Um, think about something here. Let me actually open up a window here. Um, I'm going to go to BibleGateway.com, and I'm going to look at Hebrews. Um, what is it? Chapter 10. Chapter 10, I think verse 26. Um... Is it chapter 10, verse 26? Oh, that's right. I'm in the wrong verse. Here we go. Here goes the answer. Okay, let me increase this. Actually, let me go into the the right verse, the direct verse. Oh, I'm sorry. The direct verse so we can just see it for ourselves. Oops. How come it's not doing it? Okay. And the question that we're trying to look at is, Do you really understand when we sin? Yes, that's true. I'm having trouble understanding the immediate consequence for our sin. And what happens if, when we commit the sin repeatedly? What happens to us? So we can go on to say that the wages of sin are death, is death, and that's uh, referenced several times in the scriptures. But if you look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, it gets even more scary. Because it says here, For if we go sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains the sacrifice for the sins. Right? So what is it stating here? It's it's stating that once you you begin to know the truth, once you begin to study and understand God's word on a greater level than everyone else, then you have a social responsibility to do better than everyone else. Right? You know better, you do better. So uh, we need to question did Jesus really sacrifice himself for a sin that we deliberately do on purpose, even though we have knowledge of the truth? I'm not here to say that there's a direct answer, but I think Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, gives us a good look on how people are judged more harshly because they actually have more knowledge. All right? So that kind of references what kind of happens to us. It's kind of like we are judged a little bit more harshly. So we have this other portion at 23 years old, April 28, 2003. And tell us about this one. Uh, This post was more, um, I I felt like I was living in a box. 
you know, yeah. and it kind of stems from the, the previous post with me being that quote unquote good girl. I was yeah. feeling the need to do something or to break free from that self inflicted yeah. label. Um, yeah. And so I was just kind of questioning, like, what, what is this life for? You gave us life to be lived, but I don't feel like I'm living it. And so. And even, even, I don't even know what that's supposed to look like, you know. And so I was just kind of taking it to God and um, telling him that I wanted to experience the life that he wanted me to have, not the one that I I thought I should live based on my good girl tendencies. So um, I was just bringing it to him and, and le- asking him what it should look like, but then asking him for strength too because I know that um, with the world that I come from, um, breaking the mold is not common. Yeah. So I knew I would face, like, opposition and, like, I wrote discouragement and negativity. And um, yeah. so I was just I was just putting my thoughts before him. Well, and I see that you're doing a lot of self-reflection where you're saying that you're lacking some excitement. Mm-hmm. So well, what type of excitement were you referring to? I love travel. I love yeah. travel. Um I'm quite introverted, so I don't necessarily, <laughs> yeah. meeting new people can be a little um, strange for me, but I like seeing new people. Um, yeah. I remember at certain points in my life, I, I got to the point where I would get on the interstate to go to work, and I'd see the same license plate over and over and over again, <laughs> and I'd be like, this is not okay, you know? Um, yeah. And so I need a change. I needed a, I needed a change in my life, and, um, but I recognized that early. In my in my teaching career, anyway, and that you know, but God God has again answered that one, so I'm happy. Okay. So this is in 2003, and when I'm thinking about an old post that she put here, let me see here in 2002, just about what a year earlier, like a year and right. a few months earlier, right? So right. it's funny how I'm just looking at this right now. It said. <laughs> I'm so grateful for what you did for me today. Yeah. Two exclamation points. <laughs> you answered my prayer about a job. I'm a kindergarten teacher. Three exclamation points. Yeah. I'm so excited. Two exclamation points. So obviously mm-hmm. you were very happy, right? Yes. Yeah. You felt very blessed, right? Yes. Yeah. And you're actually saying, even bless the principal. And you're thanking the Lord again at the last paragraph. Thank you, Lord, again for giving me that teacher teaching position, I know it is a gift from you, right? Then we get down a year and about half later, and mm-hmm. now you're referencing your life and you're saying, I graduated from high school, went to college, and now I'm working. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm kind of looking at this, and I'm saying, just working? You're not just right. working, right? The first you called it a gift from God. Um, and then you started referencing uh, all the exclamation points and bless other people, <laughs> right? And now you're saying many people have done that. That's no big deal. Right. Right? So then we, we need to acknowledge, of course it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Right? Once, once we start reflecting on this, we have to say that there's a lot of people without jobs. There's a lot of people without any type of purpose just walking around, right, with no sense of direction. So when we're mm-hmm. reflecting, Yes. And in those, and this is what I, when I see that, I noticed that yesterday. When yeah. I see this, I pick up on the, my humanness. Yeah. Um, it's a blessing in that moment. I was, I was walking on clouds when I first got yeah. that job. And then, <laughs> um, then you have the tendency to get kind of complacent. And, yeah. you know, you're thankful for it, but then you just, you're just itching for something else, you know. And I think that was the reason that I started keeping a thankful journal because I realized that some people, like I have to, you know, the Bible tells you to rejoice, to, mm-hmm. to find your joy again, re means again, so you have to renew it every day, you know, and so I keep that thankful journal just so I don't end up doing stuff like this again, being like, thank you, God. Okay, now I'm bored. <laughs> you know, I don't want to do that to him, you know. Yeah. Um, so that, that brought upon the other journal, the thankful journal that I have. So I make it a point to look for those things that make me thankful. And then it goes in with your thought process about excitement because uh-huh. um, you understand that you're the type of person that needs excitement, uh-huh. right? So if, before you start um, placing yourself with any goals, you, you need to know yourself. If okay. you don't know yourself, it's very difficult to get in any type of relationships because you're, you're kind of just in the air. You're just flying around. 
you're, you're going day to day. You're, you're picking up the characteristics of everyone else because you fail to have any solid characteristics for yourself. Right, yep. so that it's it's great that you know that um, you need some excitement, but I think then the other challenge comes into play when we when we receive exactly what we needed from God, then it's our job to maybe create an atmosphere of excitement. Right. right. It, uh, yeah, I don't think it's God's job to you know find out all these um, ways and mechanisms to make us happy. We have to use what He's given us and say, hey, you know what? I love teaching and I love excitement. Maybe I can. Um, create a trip for the students, right, mm-hmm. within the confines of uh, uh, some, of the, um, some of the procedures at the school, right? You create yeah. an atmosphere for yourself that is conducive to you being successful, right? So I think too many people are attempting to leave places where mainly, maybe that's where they're supposed to be. You have a lot of people who are maybe trying to leave their church, right? But what have they done in order to create an exciting type of atmosphere that is conducive to um, being the best that they can be and um, progressing the word of God. Right. Right. So I think a lot of people, again, they're, they're just running away from issues as opposed to just solving them and understanding that the Lord is going to help them throughout the whole process. Right. So um, let me see here. So again, with the personal journal, you're supposed to write in it each day and as um, Jana just referenced, there's multiple ways of actually writing this, writing in this journal. You have um, my way of just uh, stating some, some facts and saying to myself, well, such as this. So saying to myself, what did I do in order, to, um, uh, in order to fulfill, I think, my obligation to serving the Lord? Um, and you have other ways where just people are just, putting out their feelings, just talking to God, right? So mine is just mainly factual based. Yours is kind of like that conversation talking to God, right? So there's multiple ways in in order to journalize, in order to reflect, and meditation, prayer, and fasting are all a part of being being better in who we are in order to draw us nearer to Christ, in order for us to feel Christ-like, right? So that's all I have today. Jenna, I thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah, me too. It was fun. We got to do this again. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, so next time we just need a, a probably a, lo- a little bit more juicy details in your next journal. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll pray about that one. <laughs> okay. Right, so <laughs> I'm going to unmute us, and um, if anyone has any questions, you can pose them, and we'll see. Uh, exactly what we're doing. Uh, so let me unmute um, us. Hold on. You are now unmuted. All right. So everyone is unmuted now. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Oh, I guess everyone's shot. So no one has any questions or comments? I just want to say thank you. I wanted to I wanted to thank you again for another week of um, study, and also thank the guest speaker Jenna for sharing her journal with us. Um, it just it gives me an idea to have more than one journal, so I can also yeah. be thankful and and just jot stuff down. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah. No. Thank well, you're you. welcome. It's, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jenna, for sharing your personal experiences. Actually, it was quite um, riveting how I met Jenna. I wrote a post about <laughs> journaling, and she put on my post that she journalizes. So I direct messaged her, and I said, to give me your contact information because I have some work for her. And she was willing from day one since last week, since I spoke to her, to just come out with um, uh, uh, a type of thought process on her reflection in order to share it with us because – you know, I, I used to um, have these journal entries, but it was mainly a, a couple of years ago. And you can see by my journal entries, they're mainly short entries. They're not as elaborate as uh, Jenna's entries. And again, Jenna, thank you for being so willing to just be a servant and be able to uh, expound on what you know in order to build other disciples of Christ. Well, no problem. I just I just know what it has done for me. And um, I never knew that 
you know, there are classes being taught on how to journal. But um, <laughs> I think I think it's <laughs> I think it's a wonderful thing because it it really shows you who you are. If you're trying to grow as a person, if you're trying to grow spiritually as a human. It it it, it helps. It really really helps. Yes, absolutely. And Jenna, there's going to be a reward for you. Um, unfortunately, it's not going to be financial for me, but there's a reward in heaven for you. In heaven. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. So are there any more comments or questions? Okay. On that note, we're going to end it for tonight. It's about uh, 10.01, so it's right on time, especially because uh, – the Miami Heat are playing the San Antonio Spurs tonight for the NBA Finals 2014. (laughs) So um, I I think I have to get off the phone ASAP. All right. All right, thank you. All right, guys, it was was a great evening again, and I'll see you all next week. Just don't forget to actually, um, you know, re-register. By tomorrow, I'll have it up on the site. Okay? All right. Everyone have a good evening. You too, thank you. You too, bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, now people are talking. This is crazy. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Good night. Next week. Okay. All right.